Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to our sixth signal processing tutorial. Today, we're going to cover component scaling and how that affects the poles and zeros of our transfer function as shown above. So, what have we been given? Today, we've been given a circuit, we've been given the way in which those components relate to one another and how they impact the poles and zeros of the transfer function. Lastly, we're given the transfer function itself and the pole and zero which is required. When scaling components, it's important to find a scaling factor which will put all of your components within your desired ranges. Keep in mind that when designing circuits, lower capacitances are desired and having multiple components of the same type are also desired. We start with one of our capacitor values since it has a value of 1. We can then scale that value down to be within our range. Keep in mind as we scale capacitors down, we must also scale resistors up by the same gain. So let's choose an arbitrary scaling factor, Km, of 1 times 10 to the power of 6. Now if I'm being honest, this isn't entirely arbitrary. I know that this will give us a capacitor value of 1 microfarad, which is within reason. Also, I know that that should give us resistances within the kilohertz range. After doing this a few times, you should get used to this and choosing a scaling factor to give you components within your ranges should become second nature. If you choose a scaling factor and then have one of your components outside of your range, you can always adjust the scaling factor and try again. Let's start with capacitor 1. As capacitor 1 is equal to capacitor 2, we can say that the new capacitor values are our original capacitor value, 1, divided by our scaling factor. Therefore, 1 divided by 1 times 10 to the power of 6 will give us a capacitance of 1 microfarad. We can then repeat a similar process for both of our resistors. Firstly, let's do R1. R1 currently has a value of 1 divided by Z, where Z is our zero position of our transfer function and has been given to us as 200 radians per second. We then scale that up by our scaling factor by multiplying it by 1 times 10 to the power of 6. This will give us a resistor value of 5 kilo ohms. Lastly, we can find our resistor R2, which can be given by 1 over P, where P is our pole position and is 500 radians per second. Remember, we then scale it up by our scaling factor, which is 1 times 10 to the power of 6 which gives us 2 kilo ohms. Okay, and that's it. We're done. We found the component values which would give us the desired zero and pole for our transfer function. Things to take away from this video. Remember, when choosing your scaling factor, if you don't get components within your ranges, you might need to choose a different scaling factor. Secondly, it's best if you can use components which have the same value. This might not matter for you as a designer of the circuit, however, if this product is likely to be built, it's better off having multiple components of the same value to try and reduce points of error. For instance, two capacitors that look very similar but have slightly different values. Okay, and that's it for today. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you had any problems at all, feel free to leave a comment down below. In the next tutorial, we're going to step things up a bit and we're going to tackle a bi circuit. I look forward to seeing you then.